So we've been experiencing a little bit of a leak on this, not real severe, but enough to leave, uh, you know, about the size of a dollar bill, about the size of this on the ground, a little smaller than a dollar bill, about the size of that label on the ground everywhere he's parking. So I've looked into it and I found that it's a fuel pressure switch on the side of the rail. And so let me show you about that. Um, now you know I don't like covers on engines. I refer them not affectionately as uh, idiot hoods because you're an idiot if you believe that your engine is the collective of what you see versus what's actually underneath of there. This is just a facade, you know, to kind of deceive. I think it's an idiotic thing to put on and it's made by idiots for it. Anyway, this one is the best I've ever seen. This is my favorite idiot hood if you can have a favorite of something that you don't care for. And that's because it's like a... <laughs> Remember on that Audi I was talking about? And I was saying, you know, if you're going to have an idiot hood, just have the whole thing open. Just have it be a second hood, you know, have it just like go up, you know, like on a cargo deck, on a hatchback, you know, how it raises with it. But uh, that's what they did. And so you can see this is the sending unit right here in question. This is the new one that's been replaced. You can see I've got Teflon tape on the threads. Now the tricky thing with this one, now this bolt's on, you got to pull the three bolts. There's one, two three and they're 13 millimeter half inch um, but to get to that you can't use your normal it looks like an oil print sending unit but you can't use an oil sending unit socket unless you really take a lot apart you have to take off the mount to pull the engine you have to take off the mount for the turbo and so what I do is I'll use a pair of uh, channel lock pliers and before everybody cringes and thinks about me crushing this and smashing the plastic inside and creating a leak on the new one you can do it, you just got to do it gently. You use the ribs on this and you just, I'm not squeezing hard at all. I'm only just using those ribs and the bite of the pliers just to, you know, to tighten that in. I use the Teflon tape. The old one that was in there, it didn't have any type of coating from the factory or Teflon tape. And it was leaking, as you can see by the body of this thing, all the way from the threads down. But it also failed here where it was leaking into the, um, out the side of it. So anyway, it's a nasty looking little bee. You know they sting you even after they're dead? Don't ask me how I know that, but I know that it's true. So anyway, uh, that's a common leak on these, so that's something to address. Another common one is just the filter housing, to have the O-ring not be replaced with the filter or not torqued down properly and have that leak. So Anyway, that's a good place to look, a common place to have a leak, good place to start. And uh, what does the dealer want for this? Uh, they just call it a number, 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 number switch. And uh, they want 50 bucks for it. So that's all you need to know about that. If you like this video, be sure to click subscribe and see other videos like it. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Forgot to mention what uh, engine this was. This is the diesel, of course, but it's the 7.3 liter International Harvester. This is on a 97 model year. You can see the symbol for the International Harvester here. It's funny, as a lot of people don't realize that, uh, you know, Ford has their engines built for them by International Harvester. That's a good thing. They build a good engine. Chevy has uh, Duramax do it. The Duramax is made by uh, Isuzu actually which is owned a lot by Toyota you know any more of these car companies they're owned by like 30 different companies they will be a major shareholder will have like a majority 30 40 50 60 percent and then the rest will just be all owned you know by different corporations but often these car companies own each other you know it's like talk about diversifying and not having all your eggs in one basket and then somebody's going to ask me well who makes the engine for the dodge nobody's going to ask me that because everybody knows it's cummins that's like common knowledge because uh the dodge truck bless their hearts they're not the best built truck all the time they got their quirks but that engine's awesome that cummins you know you buy a dodge for the cummins you know not because it's the dodge <laughs> did i just say that i feel like a traitor <laughs> but it's true <laughs>